Hi, Accounting Learners. This is Mr. Chalke. I'm a professional teacher for Accounting Business Studies and EMS. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the cash receipt journal. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain to us what is a cash receipt journal. You should be able to uh, complete the structure of the cash receipt journal. You should be able to identify the transactions that should be recorded in the cash receipt journal. And you should also be able to complete the cash receipt journal on your own with that out of the way let's firstly start by explaining what is a cash receipt journal a cash receipt journal it is a book where in the business we record transactions where the business was receiving money money in the business can come from sales money in the business can come from rendering a service and also money in the business can come from other institutions like a bank giving you interest on a fixed deposit account or interest on a savings account and then we can also earn some money from getting uh, some money from customers when they pay directly into the bank account of the business so it's very important for us to understand how the cash receipt journal works so let's get and uh, get into the lesson and also look into the format of the cash receipt journal now the first thing that you need to understand is what each and every document in the cash receipt journal represent so that you can be able to enter the information correctly we have the document column in the document column you're going to enter the document number of that particular receipt that we have issued or if maybe you've gotten the information from the bank statement you will write the bank statement and then in the day column you are going to enter the date at which money was received okay and then under details you are going to write the institution or the person from whom you received money for business purposes and then we also have analysis of receipt each and every money that we're going to receive in the business will go through the analysis of receipt column and then we also have the bank column under the bank column we are only going to take the total money that was received on a particular day the total of the money received on that particular day will then be recorded in the bank column what am i saying if for example five transactions occur on the same day we are going to add together all those amounts and take only the total in the bank column and we also have the sales column under the sales column we are only going to record the money that we have earned from selling goods okay and you need to be very careful the amount that you're going to enter under the sales column should be at the sales amount not cost of sales okay and if maybe you're given cost of sales you will be given information on how you can use it to get the sales amount and then we also have the cost of sales column under the cost of cost of sales column we are going to record the cost of goods that have been sold and then sometimes other cash receipt journal they tend to have a column that we call the current income column which is not listed in this journal but it is possible for you to also have it should you have the current uh, income column you must know that that business only offers a service it doesn't sell goods so that's why you won't have um you won't have the sales column okay so be careful on that and then we also have the debtors control column uh debtors control receipt column under that we're going to record the money that we will receive from people who maybe bought things on credit or who were owing us and then they decided to pay we'll record that in the debtors control receipt column under discount allowed you're going to enter uh the money that you have the discount that you have given to customers let's say somebody was supposed to pay you five thousand and then you give them a discount of hundred rent that hundred rent must be recorded in the discount allowed column okay and then we also have the sundry accounts column under the sundry accounts column we're going to record only accounts that are not listed in the journal for example maybe let's say we receive money for capital uh, we don't have the capital column on this accounts that are listed here so it will be recorded under the sundry accounts column okay i hope that makes sense let's go into the transactions now now um, one of the things that you also need to be able to note is to know how to manage your time very very well okay and here they're saying that this question is worth 30 marks and it should be done in 27 minutes you need to practice how to do this in the time that is given to you and they're saying 
um, use the transactions to complete uh, the journals of Sich Harbor stores, a business that sells drinks for a month of March 2020. So we know the type of business that we are dealing with. We know that this business sells drinks. So then it makes our work to be easy because we know that we are dealing with goods. Okay. Now let's look at what we supposed to do now let's look at those transactions and they're saying this is for much whenever you do a cash receipt journal you need to be able to note the period at which you are doing that particular journal okay here they're saying we must not cast off the journals meaning that we must not close them off but i will advise you as an accounting student to know how to close off these journals it's very important here they're saying on the transaction on the first transaction they're saying that goods sold for cash according to crt the cost price of the goods were 5000 so this crt here um will be our document okay so they're saying the cost price of those goods was 5000 and then these goods were sold at a markup of 60 percent on the cost now what is happening here is that they have sold goods but they only gave you the cost price of those goods and then this is very important you need to know how to get the selling price but as accounting students we know that our cost price is always at 100 percent and then our profit is what we want to make from that sale so we know that our profit according to here will be represented by 60 percent which means that our selling price will then be at 160 percent so we can be able to use this uh, to get the selling price okay so let's look at the amount what we have in terms of uh, amount we are given the cost price which was five thousand so we then have enough information to be able to get the selling price the format says that our selling price it is made up of our cost price plus the profit that we want to make from that you can simply just take your cost price which means that your your um, selling price will be equals to 5000 of the cost price okay and then also plus the 60 percent of this amount i'm going to show you how you can do it quickly so let's see 0 0.60 uh, multiply by 5000 it is giving us 3000 so the 60 percent of 5000 is 3000 which means that then um our selling price will be 5000 plus 3000 so let's see how much we're going to get quickly so 5000 and then plus okay so let's see Five thousand, and then we're gonna say plus three thousand here and see how much it's going to give us it is giving us eight thousand okay so we know that the amount the selling price amount is eight thousand so we can verify this information by using this particular format that i like to use you know that your selling price is uh, at 160 percent so what you can do you can then say um 160 over what you are given in a form of a percentage you are given um 100 per percent which represent your sales and then you multiply by the cost of sales amount which is 5000 and then you are getting your selling price your selling price will be what you get here which is still 8000 so it means that our calculations were very correct so you need to make sure that you know how to analyze your information so let's record the first part here so on the first part that has to do with sales we'll then say that um on day number three again we know that the document is the crt here so we'll write crt okay not yet j crt Maybe let me erase so that it can be clear. Let me pin this so that it doesn't move. Um, so we know that the document here is CRT. Why am I writing CRJ? -ish? Okay, let me. So we'll write CRT here. C R and then T. And then the day it will be the third because the transaction took place on the third and then other details we don't know exactly whom uh, we sold the goods to so we'll just write cash sales 
as our details okay and then this will go through the analysis of receipt and analysis of receipt you're going to put the selling price so remember the selling price from the information that we have um the selling price was um 8000 so we're going to write that 8000 under analysis of receipt so let's do that quickly so we'll write 8000 here and then remember that 8000 was for sales so we'll also write 8000 here and then we know that the cost of sales was 5000 so we'll write that 5000 here but we cannot put this under the bank column because we need to check uh was there any other transactions that took place on that particular day and then we're not going to record anything here because it doesn't affect these other accounts okay so let's quickly go and check if there's any other transaction that took place on the same day here they're saying that the bank statement received from bandla reflected um seven thousand for an eft made by a data the Rasibia in payment of his account after allowing a 550 discount so this means that in the bank statement we received 5000 in the bank account we received 5000 from a debt so this person paid directly into the bank account of the business so we we'll then under analysis of receipt remember you have to record these things as individuals okay so as individual item first so what we will then do um we'll start by uh recording the name of the person i'm gonna write tcb here because we don't have enough space under details so it's going to be um tcb here. okay and remember this is from the bank statement the day is the same so i'll just leave it like this and then under analysis of receipt i'll record that seven thousand because we also received that seven thousand okay and then now this is where you need to be careful remember that at the end of the day we need to bank the money that we have received right so what we will do we'll then eight, add the eight thousand so we're going to say add eight thousand and then we say plus uh plus the seven thousand that we have received from cb okay so we're going to add that seven thousand there not seventy thousand seven thousand okay and then the total that we will have received and then at the end of the day that's supposed to be in our bank account will be uh, 87,000 okay so we're going to have 87,000 under the bank account not 87,000 8,700 sorry for that we're going to have that 8,700 please be careful when you do your calculations so we'd have 8700 right and then remember um the money that we're receiving from the data is 7000 so here would have 7000 here and then the discount allowed is 550 and remember this amount we have already subtracted the discount allowed which makes sense that would we'll then record 7000 this was after the discount was given not before so you need to be careful you need to check whether the a discount was given or not so now what we are going to do at the end of the day we need to check um what was the total that was deposited uh, it's not supposed to be 8700 here i think i made a mistake so let's see um 8000 plus 7000 how much are we getting and then we say plus 7000 So it means at the end of the day in our bank account we'll have fifteen thousand reflecting okay so be careful double check your figures so we'd have fifteen thousand reflecting and that's how you do the first transaction and then from there you're also going to check if there's any transaction where money was received so let's go to the transactions and check um the next one it speaks about payment so we're not interested in that and then here um we're also paying so we are not interested in that number 15 says received an eft from shingu bank in respect of the fixed deposit of 
uh, 80,000 that matures today together with the interest of 7,500. So now what we're going to do under analysis of receipt, you can just separate this. Okay. You can separate this as um, a bargain because this is from the same bank. You can, you, you have a choice. You can just write it as 87,500 because at the end of the day, we received 87,500. It comes from one bank. Remember when the bank gives you your interest plus the money of the fixed deposit that you invested, they're going to give you the entire amount. So what we can do then is to just write the entire amount and then we'll separate it in different columns. I'm going to show you how. So now um, what we're going to do then We'll then look at a uh, we're going to write the date when this this uh when did this okay it occurred on the 15th so on the we're going to write the date as the 15th and then here we're going to write uh the name of the bank the name of the bank is uh Mshengu Bank. So we'll write Mshengu Bank. The total we have received, um, according to the transaction, is eighty-seven thousand five hundred. Okay. So we're going to write eighty-seven thousand five hundred here, even here. It will be 87,500. And then under the Sandri account, we're going to separate this account because uh, we have more than, I think it's about first one, uh, interest on fixed deposit and then also the bank account. And then the other one, um, we have fixed deposit and also the bank account. So we need to separate them. So the first part, the other account that is affected, let's start with the fixed deposit the first first part um the amount that is affected is eighty thousand and then this eighty thousand will go to the fixed deposit okay and then the next amount that is affected is that seven thousand five hundred so the seven thousand five hundred the account will be interest um Okay, so interest on fixed. And then from there, you'll be done with this part. That's how you're supposed to record in the cash receipt journal. You check if there's any other money that we've received, which is not included. If you look at this, you'll realize it's the last transaction. Um, we've reached the end of the lesson. If you want me to help you, personally with such activities you're more than welcome to contact me by using the details that are provided in the description of this video thank you so much god bless you